Hello, good afternoon everyone. Dr. Rohini and uh, you are on an academy platform and today we are going to discuss about some of the image-based learning. So this particular session is based on the images. So we have a lot of anatomy images and this particular session is on brachial plexus. So we are going to look at the brachial plexus. We let's see what are the trunks, roots and how many we are going to look at. All right, one second. Let's look at how many branches from each, um, you know, cord. All that we are going to see and then we'll also talk about some of the injuries caused and whenever there is an injury to brachial plexus, what are the consequences? All this we are going to discuss in this particular section. So now here, uh, brachial plexus is the topic and we have a lot of images based on the brachial plexus. Okay, let's go ahead with this topic. All right, so here is a little introduction about me. This my credentials. I have degrees from KMC in Mangalore that is located in Karnataka and I have PhD from the Savita University Chennai that is in Tamil Nadu and also I have uh, other degrees like medical transcription degree in, that is a diploma and also MBA in hospital administration both these degrees are from Georgia USA and I was working in USA for about nine years and in the hospital, Rockingham Hospital, this is located at Virginia, USA. It's in Harrisonburg, Virginia, USA. Okay, so coming to the topics now, so let's go ahead and talk about the brachial plexus. So now here we have some more, little more, that is a telegram channel. So what is this telegram channel about? It is about you getting all those PDFs and other notes that is uploaded by the educators. The educators do upload a lot of material for you to work on. So all that you can access when you have joined the Telegram channel. So try this. Let's crack neat PG. Try to join this Telegram channel and you can access not just me, but all the educators uploaded material. And you will also get a notification and links for all those classes from us. So this is Let's Crack Neat PG Telegram channel. So this is how you know how to download the app and you know how to join it. So this is the Telegram channel link, how it looks like. All right, so what do we have here? We have some iconic and plus subscriptions. Now here we have live classes, weekly tests and other plus classes. So now this is all about, you know, the Unacademy and the Prep Ladder. And this one will give you access to unacademy classes. This is what you get. And you also get a lot of test analysis, experts, guidelines you can look for, and a lot of study material, all that is available. So there is rapid revision series, prep ladder also has a lot of question banks and study planner, personal guidance, all this you can get with the access to these series. And you also have a feature where you can ask it doubt with your educator so you can just clip that question itself and send it to your educator so that is one big advantage of being in an academy and this is <clears throat> the special class that we had on 18th and every wednesday like this so we have some special classes that was on um wednesday 18th that 7 a.m we started and then there was one at 8 a.m and it goes on like this then there was some classes in the afternoon as well so like this, we also have every Wednesday. So next Wednesday, you can look for some more classes. So all these are going to have PDF so that you can download. And all this is very important. We discussed cerebellum here. So in this particular session, we had discussed cerebellum. So we had discussed clinical aspect of larynx and pharynx. So go ahead. Even now you can download the PDF. You can go download the An Academy Learners app. So once you download that, you can go to the Neat PG section where you can look for me under this name, R-O-H-A-Q-U-A. Once you look for me or using this name, you will be able to access my profile and you can also 
look for all those classes that is uploaded by me. If you are the first time user, it will ask you for an unlock code. You can use this code. It is the unlock code, R-O-H-I-N-I-10. -I so this is a must. So if you don't have the unlock code, it will become very difficult for you to access. It will show you an error. So it is better you have an unlock code ready and then you try to download the learner's app. All right. I hope this helps. And then there is this the <clears throat> special class features. You know that it is very interactive compared to the YouTube classes. And there are polls that is, you know, done. And there is also a feature called raise a hand. And you have a feature that you never miss a class. That is because you always get notifications prior to the class. And you can also access all these lecture notes and anytime, anywhere you can access all these things. And here you can also go for the subscriptions. There are various ways to get the subscription. So there is links. There is uh, a step one where you go to my goals. You see what is your goal? Is it your goal NEET PG or FMG or INICET? Go check what your goal is. Then accordingly, you can go for whatever subscription you look for. There are special classes also. You can just check out these special classes. This is what I was talking about. You will definitely be asked about a unlock code. So please use the code at that time. This is the code. And then you can also see there are two months, three months and six month subscription. So these three options are seen here. And then you also have a payment option. You can go for it. And this is how you can install. You can see the learners app. You can go to Google Play or the store, the Apple iStore. And then whichever phone, depends on what instrument you have, you can download. This is another feature, Bucks Bounty, where uh, there is an opportunity for all the learners to report any inappropriate content. And there is subscribe, like, and share. We urge you to please subscribe, like, and share all our classes so that we can also grow and you can also earn a lot of knowledge through this mode. Okay, this is my referral code, R-O-H-I-N-I-10. So with using this, you can not only access to all those free products, but you can also get 10% discount on what you can get when you subscribe. You subscribe to the plus classes or the iconic classes. So you can get 10% discount. All right, so this is plus subscription. Likewise, you have iconic subscription. You can also see the batches starting from 18th. We just started. So you have all these FMG professional two-year batches. You can also see target next 2023. So that is also there. There is also NEET PG Ultra Fast Track High Yield Topic Revisions. And you can also look for the NEET PG one month package. And there is question bank series, about 25,000 you know, high yield clinical questions you can see. And there is 12 plus 2 option. Two months is completely free for you. And there is also four year subscription. That is plus is 60,000 for four years. So you can have unlimited access to this for four years. And also 75,000 unlimited access for four years. So it is really, really worth it. And you can also see there is a EMI option. This EMI option is really nice because for 48,000, you have to just pay 1250 for 48 months. You can pay 1250 per month and minimum of six months is what we are looking at. Once you have minimum of six months subscription, you are eligible for this. But you need to use the code, dear. You don't forget the code, R-O-H-I-N-I-10. -I so this is a must. Wherever you want to access free or subscribed um, uh, things from the Unacademy, you need to have the code ready. So there are grad test series that is already scheduled, like the test one, test two, and so on up to test 10. And it goes on from the 7th of August, it started, and it goes on till the September 9th. So it is everything is neatly scheduled and already planned. All you need to do is take the proper subscription and start studying and work towards your goal. So it is easy when someone motivates you, right?
this is the first one. Let's see what we have now. So let's go to the um, <clears throat> first thing that we have. Let's go back to what we started with. Let me just show you there is a small. Okay, so this is the brachial plexus. All right, so here we have the first one. The brachial plexus. The name itself indicates the brachial is arm. Okay, this is arm and plexus is formed in the cervical region, brachial region, and it is formed in the lumbar region and the coccyx region. There is also in the sacral region, but there is no plexus formation in the thoracic region. Keep this in mind. There is no thoracic plexus. Have you heard of this anytime? No, it is not there. All right, so we have this C4, C5, C6, C7, T1. So these roots, the ventral rami of these roots form the plexus, brachial plexus. So sometimes there could be a, you know, C4 contribution and that is called prefixed type. If there is a T2 contribution, then it is called postfixed type. So all these roots arise from the ventral rami of spinal nerves. You can also see they pass between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. Okay, very, very important. So where are these brachial roots? Between the anterior and middle scalene, you know, muscles. So all these muscles are attached to the scalene tubercle on the first rib. Okay, there is on the first rib, there is a scalene tubercle. And you will see the attachment of these scalene muscles on that. And you can also see there is roots forming those trunks. You can see all these yellow ones are the roots. And they form the superior trunk, middle trunk and the inferior trunk. So there are three trunks. So that is trunks. Okay, next coming to what are the branches that we can see? You can see that from the trunks also you have nerve to subclavius coming out. There is this one and dorsal scapular nerve that is near the shoulder region. All these uh, branches are near the shoulder region. And you can also see the formation of long thoracic nerve, C5, C6, C7. What does this supply? This supplies the serratus anterior muscle. Okay, serratus anterior muscle. All right, let's see if there's any questions or anything from the students. All right, just hold on. Okay, so now this is the trunks and then we have the trunks giving rise to those divisions. So there is an anterior division and a posterior division. Anterior division is given in blue color and there is posterior division which is given in yellow color. All these posterior divisions, they form the posterior cord. So this is a cord. Okay, these are the divisions. So that forms a posterior cord and from the posterior cord also you see lot of branches. You can see the branches, pectoral branches. You can see medial pectoral, lateral pectoral. This is lateral pectoral, there is medial pectoral and you can also see those important nerves going to the scapular region. That is subscapular, upper subscapular, lower subscapular and you can also see the long, you know, thoracodorsal nerve. And you can also see all those terminal branches of the brachial plexus. What is that terminal branches? You have the musculocutaneous, the axillary, the radial, median, and you can see ultimately the ulnar. So these are the terminal branches which go on to, you know, continue through the arm. So this is the brachial plexus. Now here what branches you have is very important. You can see the pectoral nerves, you can see the medial pectoral nerve as well. So one point is very important where the upper trunk, you know, near the upper trunk, you have an important nerve that 
you know, um, takes origin. That is called the dorsal scapular now. So this point is very important because this point is related to a condition called the herb's palsy. So that's why this point is important. All right. So let's move on to the next one and see what we have. So here the thoracic outlet syndrome. You must have heard of thoracic outlet syndrome, right? What is it? Thoracic outlet syndrome is nothing but the compression of the clavicle and the, all those structures that are present between the clavicle and the first rib. Now, what is the structure? One of the important structure is the brachial plexus. So if this gets compressed, all those numbness and other features will happen on the uh, nerves. That is, all these nerves, they supply the upper limb and all the shoulder region and there will be the symptoms of numbness. So that is the feature of thoracic outlet syndrome. And there is one more thing that we have to remember, herbs palsy. So herbs palsy is the effect on the C5, C6 root. So C5, C6, this is the one which gives that upper trunk and that is what is going to be affected. So this point here, Nerve to subclavius, you can also see the dorsal scapular nerve. So this region, that is herbs palsy. And then there is cord compression that can result from prolonged, you know, overhead activities like lifting. And there are so many people who lift things overhead, like those, um, you know, village ladies carrying water on their head with their arms lifted up. So this activity can also compress the brachial plexus and can cause numbness in that region. So remember all this, all the muscles like the coracobrachialis, pectoralis minor that are present in the arm can have compression. All right. So those nerves that supply these things like the musculocutaneous nerve. This musculocutaneous supplies the pectoralis minor and uh, it also supplies this uh, uh, the coracobrachialis, all those structures that are present between the coracoid process and the pectoralis minor, that entire area can get compressed and that is because of overhead abduction all the time. All right, let's move on to some more brachial plexus now. So here you have the brachial plexus formation with all the nerves. One important nerve that you have to notice is the long thoracic nerve. You please note down, it supplies the serratus anterior. All the muscle supplies are also given. It's a very beautiful diagram. You can see the long thoracic nerve has the root value C5, C6, C7. And you can see this dorsal scapular C5. And it supplies the rhomboidus and the levator scapulae muscles. And you can see the thoracic long thoracic nerve C5, C6, C7 and it supplies the serratus anterior. This is the one which does overhead abduction that is from 90 to 120 degree abduction. Okay, next one. It is a superior trunk. Now superior trunk compression can happen when the baby is, you know, pulled with the arm. With the arm, the only with, with the single arm that is out of the birth canal, but, but the head is stuck. So that can result in injury to the upper trunk. And this is called the herbs point and the nerves involved would be suprascapular and nerve to subclavius. Remember this, this is herbs point. Okay, so C5, C6 roots will be involved and you can see middle trunk and the inferior trunk. And then the divisions anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior. Look at all the posterior ones. They join together to form the posterior cord. And from the posterior cord, you have upper and lower scapular, subscapular ones, and also thoracodorsal. From the lateral cord, you have lateral pectoral, and you have ultimately the terminal one that is musculocutaneous. And from posterior cord, you have two nerves. One is axillary and radial. And from the medial cord, you have median nerve contribution and median nerve also gets the contribution from the lateral cord. And then ultimately from the medial cord, you have ulnar nerve. So this is the brachial plexus. Now, if someone asks you, how many nerve roots are there in the brachial plexus? You have to remember it is five. 
okay then if someone asks you how many trunks there are three trunks like a phone number you can remember this how many divisions six how many cards three how many terminal branches five so it is five three six three five okay so this is the number you have to remember 53 63 5 okay 53 63 5 so this is again you know it's uh, very simple are you tired are you tired that is roots trunks drink coffee buddy so this is one roots trunks d c d so this is five this is three this is six divisions and then there is three cards and five branches are you tired drink coffee buddy okay next one let's see what we have branches we have branches we have so many of them there is a lateral cord there is a medial cord and there is a posterior cord you can see all this l l m okay then there is m m three times m and there is four times m so you can remember this as four m u also or you can just remember this as most medical men use morphine codes this is a drug medicinal drug and you also remember the posterior cord it has this ulnar U L N A R. So remember this all the branches. So you can get the branches of all the three with this nice mnemonic. So lateral cord mnemonic you can see, medial cord, and also the posterior cord. Let's see what we have. Next, we have done with all this. We have an academy explanation, and then we have done with all those credentials that we have. Please do join the Telegram channel and don't forget to, you know. Look out for all these iconic and plus subscriptions and see what you exactly are looking for. And if you have any questions or doubts, you can always ask us. And these are some of the special classes which were conducted by me. And you can also look for more special classes on the coming Wednesday. And there is always a nice feature about special classes because you don't feel connected very much in YouTube classes, but you can feel the, you know, um, feel of an online class being a offline class so offline classes are classroom feel so you feel the same when you are in special class it doesn't look like online class at all and you also get the lecture notes and you have a reminder all the time all this is the special feature of the classes and you can also see there are steps to subscription and you can also go through that subscribe to an academy and you can also see that you can install the learners app easily with the Google Play or a app store. And you can also look out for any, you know, inappropriate content you can report definitely. And there is subscribe, like and share button. Please hit on that whenever you feel that you should subscribe and not miss a class. Please subscribe and also follow me on my profile R-O-H-A-Q-U-A. And if you are a new user, don't forget to use my code. Unlock code is definitely going to help you with free stuff. So use the code to get the discount as well as the free stuff. This is the code. Don't forget to subscribe. And there is subscription offers like plus iconic. You have so many badges running parallelly and also packages. And you also have question bank series and a lot of subscriptions like four year subscription or 12 plus two subscription and EMI options and also the grant test series. Okay. So with all this, let's move ahead with some more branches. So we have the musculocutaneous axillary median radial ulna, right? What is the root value? The musculocutaneous C5, C6, C7. This has only two the median has all of them so it has all radial also has all you can say c5 actually c5 c6 c7 also then this is c8 and t1 okay so the ulnar has c8 t1 and this is involved with the clump case palsy and the axillary is involved mainly with the herbs palsy 
the first one that is going to show some effect is the deltoid and here the first one that is not going to work are the muscles of the hand all right so here what muscles are supplied by these nerves and here you remember musculocutaneous supplies the arm muscles and here this one axillary shoulder region and you can see the median supplies the flexors of the forearm and the radial supplies not just the forearm but also the arm region but in the flexor compartment what about ulnar ulnar is the muscle that supplies only one and half muscles in the arm forearm like the flexor carpi ulnaris and half of flexor digitorum so this is half of this and this is one full so remember that is one and half so that is one and half muscle in the forearm flexor compartment and what else it also supplies those muscles except the thenar muscles it supplies everything and also two lateral lumbricals that is four and five so keep that in mind and also keep this chart very handy so that you can easily go back and see what are the supply of these muscles and nerves so now let's look at some of the applied aspects now if there is a axillary nerve injury you can very easily make out you can see that the contour there is a nice contour of the deltoid looks like this person has been a gym goer so you can see there is a contour but this side what has happened the contour is lost you can see the trop you know uh, tubercles greater and the lesser tubercles they just pop out and you can easily see that there is a flat shoulder and there is a fractured surgical neck of the humerus that could be the reason of axillary nerve injury okay so that is the place where axillary nerve is related that is called surgical neck you have anatomical neck also and that's where capsule is related now there is a paralysis of deltoid and teres minor but teres minor you cannot make out easily so what you can see is the deltoid the contour of the deltoid is lost and loss of abduction 50 to 90 degree you can make out and look at this one there is an ulnar nerve lesion at the elbow so you can see at the elbow it crosses through this medial condyle this is the medial side so you can see there is a small condyle that you know through the it hooks onto that condyle and passes behind it and you can see fracture of the condyle can result in injury to this and there could be motor paralysis whatever muscle supplied by this one the flexor carpi ulnaris the flexor digitorum and all the small muscles in the hand they all lose action and it also has some sensory supply it supplies the palm so one and half fingers one and half fingers in the palm loss of sensation so this is supplied by which one this is supplied by median so that is fine next you can see ulnar nerve injuries at the elbow so now here is the elbow and you know that medial epicondyle behind that is the ulnar nerve it is very well secured and only if there is a you know reason for that would be fracture of the elbow dislocation of the elbow there could be a spur on the medial epicondyle or it could be cubital valgus that is deformity in which the elbow is turned outwards and it is you know going to really make the ulnar now vulnerable to injury next you have the cubital tunnel syndrome this is not carpal this is not carpal carpal tunnel is right in the center there is a separate tunnel for the ulnar now that is called cubital do you remember u for ulnar okay so through that it passes sometimes there could be compression of the nerve in this tunnel and that is the area supplied by this nerve that is one and half fingers that would lose the sensation and you can see all those muscles in the flexor compartment the common flexor origin and you can also indicate the flexor carpi ulnaris the last one is flexor carpi ulnaris all right what is guyon's 
canal syndrome. This is also for ulnar now. Okay, so that is a small canal that is present here. This is different and that is different. Cubital tunnel is different and this is different. So here what happens if there is a compression, the person again would loss, have a loss of sensation in the one and a half fingers. So this is where you have the ulnar artery and the nerve passing. Rest of the things pass underneath. So this is the flexor retinaculum. So underneath the retinaculum, you have the median nerve. Median nerve and other vessels passing underneath. But what you see in the separate you know, canal is the Guyans canal. That is where you can see the ulnar. Very well secured. So ulnar is above the carpal tunnel. So this is how you test the ulnar now. You can ask the patient to grab a piece of paper. So that is to check the palmar, which do adduction, right? They do the adduction. So add, you are trying to add them and see whether she can gr grasp or she can hold the paper really well. That is palmar adduction. So that is introche action. When you want to test the dorsal introche, that is abduction. So you have to try to, you know, ask the patient to grip something when he is, you know, you, you can, you can check that. So this is the palmar introche. When you ask the patient to grip something, there is resisted abduction of the fingers. So here that person is not able to, you know, do the abduction because there is a resisted abduction. He's not able to do this action. So when he is not able to do this action and move the thumb away from the other fingers as in gripping, then you know that the dorsal introche is, a, is defective. So now action of the in, introche and lumbricals, what are their actions? Now you know that palmar will do add, dorsal will do abduction. What about the Lumbricals. What do lumbricals do? Lumbricals will flex the MCP and they will do extension of the IP. That is the action of lumbricals. Next, you can see median nerve injury. So here you, there is a loss of this sensation. That is three and a half fingers. Three and a half fingers loss of sensation plus the thinar eminence is flat, just like ape thumb deformity. And you can also see the thumb is adducted. Okay, it is adducted. You can see it is adducted and also rotated. And the person will not be able to do opposition. Opposition is counting. This is the best method to test. You ask the person to count. If he's not able to count, you know that median nerve is injured because the hand stays in the position of adduction. So when it is adducted, then you know that it is the median nerve injury. You can also see some clinical features. You can see there is a ulnar nerve, radial nerve and the median nerve supply that is sensory. So when the sensory nerve supply is lost, you can feel that pain, numbness and tingling sensation on that region when the nerve is compressed. So if the median nerve is um, compressed, the person will feel pins and needles in this region. Okay, he'll feel that his hand has got something pricking on it all the time. Just like if you touch cactus plant, how you'll feel, you feel itchy. That's what the person would feel in this region. That is median nerve. And usually it will become more and more worse at night and can, you know, person will awake from sleep, you know, trying to scratch some part of the hand. And there is difficulty in holding the glass or cup securely. That will be another feature because he will not be able to grip. And there is also the person can, you know, relieve the symptoms by flickering or you can just see that. He'll go on, you know, doing this so that he can relieve the symptoms. That is called flicking sign. So if the person is going on flicking his hand, then you know that he is feeling the pins and needles or tingling sensation in the hand. That is all because of the median nerve injury.
Next one, okay sign. When do you ask the person to do okay sign? It should touch. This should touch. Okay, you can see that this is for anterior intraosseous nerve weakness. If the anterior intraosseous nerve that is branched from the median nerve is paralyzed, then the person will not be able to do this okay sign. Instead of that, he will hold it way too back. He should be able to do this. The okay sign. If it is not, instead of that, if it is like this, then it is not fine. You are testing which muscles? You are testing flexor pollicis. Pollicis is for the thumb. You are also testing one more muscle that is flexor digitorum profundus. So flexor pollicis and flexor digitorum will help you do this good sign, okay sign. But if the person is doing this sign, then it is wrong. With the weakness in these muscles, the digital phalanges cannot flex. Okay, so these Phalanges will not be able to flex and instead fingertips touch. So this is supposed to flex. The last digital phalanx is supposed to flex. It may not flex this way. And instead of that, the entire thing may sit on the other finger. Okay, the volar surfaces of each distal phalanx may contact. So this is the volar surface. Okay, this is not correct. This is not correct. Instead of that, we want it more arched like this. Next, extensor pollicis. Extensor E is here. This one, extensor pollicis brevis. This is also one of the boundary of the anatomical snuff box. Right? Along with the abductor. So, when you ask a patient to abduct with the other fingers flexed, you are checking for the extensor pollicis brevis muscle. So, which helps you in abduction. So, you are asking the person to do abduction of the thumb. To check this muscle. Okay. So, this is the thumbs up sign. This is the median nerve lesion. Three and a half fingers. And me distal median nerve lesion. This is the one. This is called median claw hand. And this is proximal median nerve lesion. That is towards way up high. And here this is called hand of Benedictine or Pope sign. This is sensory defects. So here will be the median. Three and a half fingers. And the person will not be able to hold or grip anything. See here he is not gripping it very well. Here he has a proper grip. There is no grip. So this is called bottle sign. Okay. Next one, ape hand deformity. You can see there is an ape hand deformity. This is adducted and rotated thumb. There is no muscle mass here. Hand of Benedictine. These two are bent. Your pointing index. These are all defects from the median nerve. This is ulnar claw hand. Here you can see there is a claw formed. And this is hyperextended. Which one? This joint. That is metacarpophalangeal is hyperextended. This is the wrist drop because of the radial nerve. Because it supplies the extensors. Other than that, oops, other than that, you also have axillary, which I mentioned. That is the contour of the shoulder is lost. So remember, ape hand, hand of Benedictine, pointing index, they are all the median nerve lesions. If it is proximal, what happens? If it is distal lesion, what happens? If it is proximal, you remember proximal for hope. Okay, proximal lesion is hope. Distal is just a median claw hand. Okay, just like ulnar claw hand, this is median claw hand. And here you can see there is the claw hand, hand of Benedictine. So this is also kind of same thing. So it is either called hand of Benedictine or Pope's hand. So this is also Pope. So this is which one now? Proximal damage to median now. This is the distal damage to um, the distal damage will have complete claw hand, and this one is pointing index, 
and this one is ape thumb deformity where you can see the adducted thumb and rotated thumb. All right. So with all these, I think I have made some things really clear for you in the section of brachial plexus. I myself, Dr. Roini, and uh, would like to urge each and every student who is watching this to please hit a like and also follow me on my profile so that you can get more of notifications from me and not miss a single class from YouTube or the special classes. Special classes are really, really nice. So please go ahead and try those classes and you will definitely like it. I have so many classes coming up on Wednesdays. So please look forward to all these classes on Wednesdays. And in the meantime, you can also go look at all my YouTube classes and YouTube classes. The next class will start at 4 p.m. with more of image based learning. So isn't this fun? Images are really going to give you lots and lots of knowledge input. All right, with all this, myself signing off.